So now I'm going to go into the anomalies per units. Not all units would want anomalies, but like I'm just going to do it on a per unit basis. It'll change as comps change, so that's why this is here. But uh, like I was thinking of doing it on a comp by comp basis, but like that's a little bit more situational. I have the top three, I think, in my opinion, marked, and then I mean, okay. I also have Essence of Navori, which I have it like it's disabled, so you can't find it anymore. But I have it marked in the places where it would be. So if it was in the top three, if it's in the first three. That's where it would have ranked before it was removed. And if it's not in the first three, like here, that just means that, like, it was takeable. So, for each champion, you're going to see the top three and then some others. Uh, and then depending on what champion that it is, you could also take stuff from here uh, if it's like, generic enough. So, if it's in the top three, you'll have repeats from here if, if it pertains, because some of these are going to be in the top three for a lot of champions so those will show up but if they're not in the top three they're not going to show up here this is like just the more niche stuff so like all the stuff here uh if it's on the top three it's not going to be here but if it is like if it is that broken you're going to be seeing a lot which uh spoiler alert uh you're going to be seeing some of these a lot so uh let's get started uh, first is Amumu. Amumu is an automata watcher. This guy. His ability is... Well, he, okay, he doesn't have an ability, but uh, he passively reduces all incoming damage by a set amount, and then every second he also does damage AoE in a one-hex around him. Trait are, traits are automata and the watcher. He's a tank. He's, he does a bit of damage. You're going to see him in a lot of comps with watchers. Automata is a bit niche right now, but right now, or like to play properly around the Amumu, like, for Amumu to be in a state where he is anomaliable would be a comp where he's, like, a, of the primary focus. In, in which case, you're probably going to be playing around Automata. So, I have that criteria in mind. Like, as of now, he isn't a unit that you would normally anomaly because he isn't the main focus of any comp right now. Uh, he's just a one-cost frontliner. But if you were to anomaly him, this is where this comes from. So I guess I'll talk about Automata right now. Basically, when Automata units do damage, they store charges, and then at 20 charges, uh, they do damage based on like the damage that they did. So on a Mumu, the stuff that gives him damage is very good, in addition to like stuff that makes him more tanky, uh, stuff that like, does that kind of stuff, or stuff that does both. So the best choices I have for him are Thorn Skin, which is a fairly generic... Anomaly, tank anomaly. It gives a decent amount of armor and MR, and it does damage to adjacent enemies when there is damage blocked. This is on any damage, so and does damage to all enemies in range. So it adds up a lot. Uh, it's a very strong anomaly. It's not broken, but on something like a Mumu with Automata, you get this Automata stacks for free. So uh, the interaction is very broken. It's not very broken. It's it, it's it's very strong. So that's why I think Thorn Skin would be the number one choice, just because it kind of caters to everything that Amumu would want to do if you were to anomaly him. Next we have Stone Skin, which I talked about before. Uh, it's just a very, it's just OP as a tank anomaly. Most often, if you're gonna be playing around Amumu, you probably want him as a tank. So that's why that works. And then Dramatic Entrance is in the same boat because he's not the main focus. I think it's pretty safe to put. Uh, Dramatic entrance here. If you were like, if you have them three sword and you have three items on him, like I think you would probably have other frontliners anyway, so it should be safe to take. And then this anomaly is broken. But other things that you can take, uh, apart from like all of these that I haven't been covered, if yeah, uh, laser eyes uh, gives it, it just does damage, so it's attack automata, uh, not necessarily needed, but like. It works. Slow cooker is like, I guess better. It's a better. Uh, also, these things aren't lit, aren't sorted. Uh, this is this is these aren't in order. It's just other stuff that you can take. Uh, slow cooker is very good on a mumu, or it would be if you were to, like it, it would be it would be fine. It would stack automata, so it's pretty good. Uh, slime time does damage and it heals, so a mumu wants both of those things. So it's pretty good. Touch of frost, 
I don't know how it works on Amumu, because Amumu doesn't cast, so it might just be that this doesn't work at all. In which case, I'm trolling you. Uh, I'm sorry. But if it does work, if it does anything to any of the units that are around Amumu, then it'd be very bro good, if not broken. However, I have never tried putting Touch of Frost on Amumu. I don't even think I will. But if someone else wants to try that, good for them. It might be that it might be a thing, but most likely it is not a thing. Uh, next we have Darius. Darius is a, another watcher, uh, except he's a conqueror. Conqueror is like Noxus from Set Nine, uh, pretty much. He's attack. He's an he's a he's a, he's a fighter. He's a bruiser. He's a very good item holder. He performs the same role as one cost Darius does in pretty much every set. This set he does a spin and heals. But uh, this time he has, he has a bleed, which is uh, a bit more interesting. Doesn't change too much. You're not normally going to play around 3-star Darius very much. And if you do, it's probably not to put items on him. You're just putting him as a... Just along with other units. Because there are some uh, one-cost rerolls that do run Darius, but... I don't know. But if you were to care enough to Anomaly Darius, have him as your main carry, what would you take? The first one is Diving In. I think. So what Diving In does, on your first cast, leap to enemies and stun a 2x radius for 1.5 seconds, and then you gain attack speed and Omnivamp. This is pretty good on Darius in particular because uh, his spin is AoE, and I feel like he could do a lot with that. He just jumps into... something like that. On his first cast, he jumps in. Uh, it's In a large AoE, it stuns. It's like It's a pretty good anomaly. Uh, but then he, he can actually use the positioning that he's in to do more damage uh, and potentially do damage to backliners, which I think is pretty good. There aren't a lot of units that want to be in this range because they're a single target anyway. So, like, it's a kind of a gamble as to what things you're going to hit. But with Darius, it's, he's AoE, so it's fine. Even, like, even if he dies, like, if he does damage to enough units, I think that's good enough. He also gets Omnivamp and uh, some attack speed. The attack speed is whatever, but the Omnivamp is pretty nice for keeping him alive to maybe cast a second time. Next we have Invisibility. I talked about this. It's very broken. Uh, if your carry is Darius, he can definitely benefit from being invisible. Maybe not as much as other units, but like, it is very broken. Aggro drop every 4 seconds can definitely be abused. So, yeah. And then the third one, I have Stunts again. Which is, I mean, it's just to keep him alive. Uh, this is more if like you play him... More as more of a tank, which in a lot of cases you will be. There's kind of weird because like he's not like played up very often as like a th as like a focus, but it's covering a lot of ground with this. Uh, this is probably your best tank option. Other options: the finisher, which is like the collector. It just executes below some threshold. He has a bleed, so he can proc this pretty easily. If at any point in time they fall below the health threshold, he executes them. So it's pretty good. Touch of frost. Th I mean, this time I know like he AOE, so anything that he hits will get frosted. So that can be pretty good. Wolf Familiars. Uh, this is an AD anomaly and Darius is a conqueror. So if you have that in, you'll have a good amount of AD. And I mean, Darius would like AD items. So it's potentially a good free damage. Slime time is healing and damage. Like, can't complain. And then obviously, depending on what role you fill on Darius, you can take like a, like a carry. Uh, melee, you can take a main carry, you can take a tank, like whatever you take on him. Perfectly fine. Now we have Draven. Okay, so this one I'm not too sure about because some people have played it. I I, I haven't played 3-star Draven. Or I haven't anomaly 3-star Dra Draven. I've played 3-star Draven, but I've anomaly someone else every time I have. So, I don't know. But, this is a unit that you could anomaly. So you could be the carry of a comp. Because he is an 80 backliner. He's a one cost, but he can be good enough to at least carry for some amount of time. There's two setups. There's Conqueror and there's Pit Fighter. How likely he... I mean, I've seen him in Conqueror. I've seen Pit Fighter, but I don't see him re-rolled in Pit Fighter. So I don't actually know if that would ever be a thing. The first choice, I have Knockout. I don't know if this is the best thing. But I th it seems pretty good. Draven the way he works. Draven, uh, he stacks his axes and they empower his autos. So these autos do a, like a enhanced amount of his base AD. What Knockout does is on each cast, gain some AD, 
Your next attack after casting gains bonus uh, crit chance and it deals 90% true damage. Like bonus. So basically he hits a lot. He hurts a lot. Uh, his mana cost isn't that high either so he can get this a lot. And with the amount of AD he gets from like Conqueror and stuff. This just gives him a lot of burst. It's like he's, he's one of the better users of knockouts. Because even with units that cast more frequently they don't do that much damage. At the very least, it wouldn't be bad. Like, I think, like, worst case scenario would probably be, like, maybe third. I don't know. But for now, I have it at number one. I like it a lot. A second, I have Combat Story, which is just generically very broken. Uh, damage Amp, based on how low you are. If you're at one life, it's a lot of Damage Amp. Uh, Draven doesn't get Damage Amp from his... I mean, he gets true, bonus true damage, but it's, like, a separate thing. So, what I mean is, uh, you have... Two traits that give you damage amp anyway, which are Enforcer and Sniper. Draven is neither of those. So yeah, you don't there's no diminishing returns. So this is very good. Even on, on the ones where there are diminishing returns, which I'll talk about soon. Or I'll talk about now. Uh it's still good enough to take. You just just not at the highest priority. But you can still take it. Now, because I don't know what you would play Draven three star in, like he is realistically not anomaliable. So I had to consider it a little bit but i don't actually know what you would do so in conquer i have uh, power absorption which gives him ad uh like a percentage of the ad of his allies that die because he's like the only backliner in the comp for conqueror he would realistically get it from everyone and uh conqueror gives ad so he'd actually be getting more ad than like other units would in other comps so it could be very good uh, and then we have strength training which is more of a bruiser trait. What this is doing is it's not only buffing Draven, but it's buffing all his allies. All the pit fighters are AD bruisers. So pit fighter, like just the whole team is benefiting from strength training. Power absorption, it's what I said. Each time an ally dies, gain 5% uh, of their AD, which is good for Conqueror, which is, uh, it gives them, it just gives uh, AD AP, so. If you're playing Vertical Conqueror, that's like a lot of bonus stats to give to Draven. But, uh, Strength Training. Gain AD every three times the attack, your, your whole team gets 4% AD. So, Pit Fighter, it is a bruiser trait. All these units are AD bruisers, so all of them benefit from AD. So if you were to play it in that comp, it'd be good for all of them. It'd be good for Draven too, but it's good for all of them as well. And then other options are here. They're all fine, but they're not as good. Like, Draven's pretty generic in like his like function, so a lot of things that could be good could also take anything like that. Anything that would pertain to uh, an AD carry. So there's a lot of options. Irelia. Irelia is a tank. Uh, this is pretty much a reprint of sets nine. Irelia one cost. Enter defensive stance, gain shield, deal damage, AoE, and deal, deal scaling with the damage absorbed. So if she's hit by a lot, she can do a lot of damage potentially. It doesn't add up to that much. So even when you solo frontline her and like she casts, it doesn't do enough to like one shot everything, which would be broken. But like Sentinel just gives armor MR. And then Revel uh, gives max health and then some stats, extra stats. So for Irelia, the first one I have is Cosmic Rhythm. You're going to be seeing this a lot on tanks. So Irelia gets a shield for 3 seconds and then she does her damage. Cosmic Rhythm procs every 4 seconds starting at when the spell happens. So after you cast, you're basically going to cast again. And you're going to keep casting. You're going to keep getting a shield and you're going to keep doing damage. Irelia is not that strong, but it's not that broken. Like I wouldn't really plan on anomalying Irelia in a lot of cases, but if you did... That's probably the best you can hope for, because perma casting with tank, a lot of potential damage, a uh, ton of free shielding. Next is stone skin, same boat. It's just tank, dramatic entrance. So there's some comps that like have I really a solo front line. I don't actually know if that's correct, but that's what people have on their comps. But if you were not to do that, then dramatic entrance would be pretty good. Slime time, pretty good. Slime time isn't, I don't, it might be generic enough that you could take everywhere, but I'm just, 
then I'll leave it to here. But yeah, Irelia also has a Hero Augments. We can look at that real quickly. What's it called? Blade Dance, yeah. Uh, it makes her do the, it makes her dash. I've not seen this one at all, so I don't actually know. But based off of what, well, one people say that it sucks, but just thinking about what's presumably care, I, I don't even. This is physical damage, so I guess using eighty carry. I like the image I have in my head is like set six point five Irelia. I think like that's what I think of in my head. I don't know if that's what that is, but yeah. So assuming that she's just an eighty bruiser of some kind. You have generic bruiser anomalies, invisibility, probably pretty good. If she's dashing uh, into the enemy backline, uh, invisibility is probably pretty good. She probably would like an aggro drop. Comeback story, uh, if, if you're taking a hero augments and actually playing around it, I would assume that you would probably anomaly it. So comeback story is probably pretty good. Then next we have Light Legacy of Shirima, which is a callback to Shirima from set 9. After 10 seconds, gain stats. Very good on bruisers. It's pretty good on tanks. It's a lot of health. You get the tactic too. It's okay on backliners as well. Uh, you need second use both. Are really happy. Irelia hopefully will live 10 seconds. And if so, I think she would benefit a lot. I don't know if attack speed is good on her. But because her thing gives attack... Her, the hero one gives attack speed. So I would assume that is something that she wants. If not, I don't know why they wouldn't have given her like AD or something, or like damage amp or something. But assuming that she wants attack speed, that's probably pretty good. And then some other options. Lux. Lux is an academy sorcerer. Academy is pretty weird. It gives health and damage amp. Uh, it gives items. And it, it gives you like a list of items. And then it'll... Uh, three, four, five. It'll give you one of those items. And then uh, you get some bonus stats. It's a weird trait. And then you're also a sorcerer, which is a uh, mage trait, gives AP. Uh, Lux's ability, grant shield to lowest current health ally, deal bonus magic damage on next auto attack. You look at this number, yeah, that's a, that's a that's a big number. Lux does a lot of damage. Probably the best Ludens user uh, in the game. I think it's just a, a very underrated unit. I think she's anomalyable. I think she's, you can play a comp around her. I think she's very good. She was a pretty good Essence of Navarre user. Honestly, with the killstreak nerf, on the essence of Navori, it might have been more broken, but they removed it, so uh, whatever. Killstreak might be better. What killstreak does is it gives you mana on kill. This number is wrong. It's now 25 because it was nerfed, but that's still pretty good. Lux, the way Lux functions is she just wants to one-shot units one at a time. You want to give her enough damage to do so, and then every time she casts, she shields, and then she one-shots something, which is a... Uh, very fun pattern. And then next we have Headhunter, which is a pretty generic one. This gives attack speed on kill. So it gives flat, and then it gives permanently more based on... Like, each time you get a kill, you get one more. So this... If you're playing a comp around Lux and you're anomalying her, she is going... Like, her job is to one-shot units one at a time. So she will be benefiting a lot from this. And then in a, the similar vein, you have Hyper Velocity, which is like... The same kind of thing but it works differently hyper velocity instead of getting on kill you gain on cast you gain more but over the course of the game headhunter is better hyper velocity scales in combat faster but uh i think headhunter is better because early on like getting kills early faster would be better but basically these make her cast all of these are just making her, her cast more because she doesn't need more damage like a single death cap or a single like Archangels would be enough to just launch out pretty much anything that isn't like a three item tank and then other options One of the uh, one anomaly I want to talk about is ultimate hero, which is an anomaly that Can give you a free four star. That's why they are nerfing four stars. You just put this mostly on the carries uh, it's, it's not like truthfully. It's not that insane Which is why I don't think I have it best in slots anywhere, but It's not bad uh, and you can only take it on a one cost, so something to consider. Maddie. Maddie is a enforcer sniper. She's basically one cost Caitlyn, except instead of doing everything in one hit, she does it in six hits. She targets the furthest enemy away, fires six shots. Enforcers gain a shield and gain damage amp. And then they also gain attack speed when certain units die. 
Sniper is just Sniper. Gain damage amp for Hex away from the target. She is essentially one cost Caitlyn reprint. Except Caitlyn actually exists in this as a 5 cost. But it's like basically the same thing. So Maddie has a high mana cost. And not necessarily going to be building like stuff to do that. Uh, like to cast faster. So I think Cosmic Rhythm would be very good. Because she would be casting very frequently. And yeah. If you do have attack speed. It's like. Or like Shoujin or something. It wouldn't be as good. But if uh, I think because she probably won't. Then this is pretty good. And even then. This might make her cast more than it would with like attack speed. I've like I've seen three star Maddies, like Mighty Carry, but like because I do see it with Ginsu's. So I think at some point in time this would be worse off. But like it's kinda hard to judge because I'm basing my experience of Maddie on the early game, but anomalies happen at 4-6, which is the late game. So but yeah, high mana cost, she in theory could be good with it. If not, just, you can skip it to something else. Uh, you also have Strength Training, which is good for Snipers and Enforcers. Most of the Enforcers are AD. I think all of them are AD except for TF. Like, most of the the, the carries are AD, so it would help a lot. And then the Snipers are all AD except for Kog'Maw. Good candidate, because she buffs more than herself. But Eagle Eye is pretty much the same thing, except it's, like, only for herself. It's, like, slightly better, but, like, it's overall worse than other options. What, okay, so what Eagle Eye does is it gives her one range and then she gains damage uh, every two seconds. At 10 seconds, she gains 30% damp. At 20 seconds, she gains 60. It adds up, but like it relies on her not looping, which she isn't likely to. But other things give similar stuff like faster. So we have Morgana. Morgana is a Black Rose Visionary. Black Rose is a summon trait. It summons Scion and he does Scion things. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's just a frontline extra unit. And then Visionary gives the uh, Visionaries more, like, percent more mana. So, like, when you auto, you gain 10 normally, 10 mana, and then you can gain more. And then from other sources of mana, you also gain more. So stuff like Shoujin gives you 25% more. Uh, Blue Buff, which is reworked, gives you 25% more. Anything from Augments or Anomalies give you 25% more. That's two, and then you have four, six, eight, which also give more. Morgana is a dot champion, so Morgana is a one cost doing it. Uh, but yeah, she hits an enemy, does a lot of damage over a long period of time. She also reduces shields. I found to be pretty annoying when I play one of the few units that uses shield. I mean, actually, there's a lot of sources of shields, but not a lot that comes from units. It's mostly from traits. But yeah, she's an AP caster. Because she gains more mana, kill streak is pretty good on her. The finisher, because she's a dot champion. Uh, magic training, which is new. It is basically strength training, but for AP. On cast. Uh, on cast, gain AP based on mana spent. Morgana casts a lot. But also, she'd be played with other units that also want AP, so... And then other units, other... I mean, other anomalies. Powder. Uh, from Arcane. So, she does a lot of damage in a large AoE, but she has a higher mana cost. Does damage in a two hex explosion? It does a lot of damage. Uh, damage is reduced based on how far away from the epicenter. So like, she hits the Morgana, uh, it'll do the most to her. It'll do less to Maddie. It'll do less to Singed. The, uh, basically, Powder does a lot of damage in an AOE, but like very infrequently. So, to fix the infrequent problem, you can use Cosmic Rhythm, and then she's suddenly doing big AOEs very frequently. And, uh, yeah, that's broken. And then there's also a hero augment here, which is, uh, super interesting. But otherwise, Powder is still, like, an AP carry. So, comeback story, broken. No worry, was broken. Uh, Force of Friendship, which is a... It's similar to comeback story, except it scales with how many three-star champions you have. So, if you're gonna play, like, a one-cost reroll, that is your time to take Force of Friendship. And that's where it could be better than comeback story. However... You have to hit other three stars, and you need to. You have to hit a lot of three stars for it to be reliably better. And if you're at one life, this might be better anyway. So, but now we have her hero augment. This makes her explosion bigger, 
and it also has damage to allies. Yeah, and basically, instead of two hexes, there's four hexes, which is pretty much the whole map. But you can also do damage to allies. I think people think this augment is very not good, but I'm not sure how they're building here. So they might be doing it wrong, but I'm, I'm not, that's not what this video is for. But the point is, uh, you're building the same, it's the same thing. It's it's just powder, but 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 bigger. Not not jinx bigger, but like it's like. I mean, it's the same thing. You're doing it's the exact same thing. So it's the same anomalies. Next we have singed. Singed gains durability, which is damage reduction, and then he also grants ally attack speed for four seconds. Uh, he has a stun sentinel and a Cambarian. Cambarian is the cash out trait, and this trait is super broken. It is, it is like so broken if you get the cash out. And then Sentinel is Sentinel. He has a hero augments, but as a base value, he's he's got a lot of utility. So Cosmic Rhythm is very nice. Every four seconds, you're giving an attack speed, uh, like a very large steroid. It's a case over four seconds, but you're pretty much giving an ally like permanent attack speed. This is a it's a it's a very strong synergy. You could play this in a lot of comps, and like it's better than taking like an attack speed anomaly onto uh onto your main carry. So like, it is very strong. Next we have uh deep roots, which is interesting. I don't actually know if this is. I guess it's okay. I guess it's to contribute to the kidnapping thing. Even if Twinge isn't one v one, he's tanky enough to not die to the unit, and hopefully something else will kill. The things so with deep roots uh he's not he doesn't have aoe so he's not like he's not being punished for hitting only one unit but uh you can kidnap like camille and if he doesn't die to the camille uh your board can uh uh kill the camille uh, but you have to make sure that Singed is not dying, so yeah, you'd only anomaly him if you have like items on him. And then Dramatic Entrance is if, I mean even if he's your main tank, he would be your only tank. So this is good. Because yeah, you wouldn't solo tank him. Singed Hero Augments. It's basically set to Singed Poison Trail. Uh, instead of giving attack speed, he gives himself move speed and Omni Ramp. Uh, and he has this Poison Trail. And he runs around. So, because he runs around, uh, if you make him give get free aggro drops, uh, he will not be touched until pretty much he's the last one left. And that is broken. Slow cooker, kind of same thing, except you're kind of contingent on him not being targeted instead of you getting it for free. But if he's not target, if he's not dealt with, like if he just walks out of auto range, uh, your AOE is the whole board and uh, you have Omnivamp, so you are just going to not die and you're going to cook the whole board. And then last chance is to pray that... He walked onto backline and he got targeted and died, but like he still one shots the backline before dying. I have no idea how this works with Touch of Frost, but it could be good. And everything else is like generic. Stab. Stab is uh, another arcane character. He's a cool passive. Uh, whenever he heals, he, he also heals the two closest allies. And then his active is it does damage and he heals. Uh, he's an enforcer and a bruiser. Uh, enforcer we talked about. Bruiser is just bruiser. It. he's single targets so you can use kidnapping technology he looks like someone that would do that you're not losing any damage you're healing two closest allies for percentage of the amounts uh if you want to make sure it goes on the front line you can just put him here just in range to hit the closest allies he also has a hero augment instead of healing he gets only vamp he does more damage here same thing same play style he's still single targets but not with his Omni Vamp. Some stuff like Slow Cooker can be good. Legacy works well just because he's it's attack speed and health, which good on him. Slime time is healing and damage, so pretty good. Dramatic entrance. Uh if he's not your main tank. Or if he's not your only tank, it's just good. Trundle. Heal does damage. Uh effect increased based on his missing health. He's a tank. Root fighter, generic tank, and then he has a hero augment. Uh, instead of healing, he gets attack speed and he gets permanent AD. Basically, he stacks. Uh, it's basically stacks on stacks masses. 
except he gets attack speed. I think people are playing this wrong because they don't realize what his spell does, but aggro drop so he can live longer and actually fight deep roots so he can kidnap people. He can kidnap people and stack AD for free. So like he can when he hits one at a time and he just hits, even if he doesn't kill the target, as long as he's not dying, he's just stacking for free. He's not in the range of enemy carries. And he's just stacking for, like I'm telling you it's broken. And the Titanic strikes is because he has a lot of AD. So it does uh it gives him like a T mat. So if he has a lot of AD and a lot of attack speed, this does a lot of damage. Why doesn't he want to build healing on him? However, you can take a lot of stuff on him. Jax, AoE, uh, she's Bravel Visionary. She just does AoE damage. And then more. She just wants to cast more. I mean, it's just a generic mage ones. This is because she's Visionary. She's Visionary. Generic carry. Pretty good at this. Violet uh, does signal target damage, and then she does a little bit of... Actually, no, it's just all signal target damage. And then she has a knock-up. Uh, but she's like a bruiser. So you can do the kidnapping strat, and you just kidnap them. And, and she just 1v1s people. You can make them invisible. You can give her stats that she's good with. Other stuff that can work, too. Violet, like, is... Oh, no, okay, she's, she's like, not the best primary carry, but she's, like, a, a good secondary carry. Uh, same thing as Vex. We have Zyra. Zyra does damage to target and then she hits other targets nearby. Damage to Morg and then other vines to like powder. Uh, she starts. She also stuns the main target. But she's a experiment mage. Experiments is a uh, weird and uh, complicated. And uh, right now there's no comp that plays around the experiment Zyra. But I mean, I have a setup for it. The problem is that it's not good. But uh, we'll probably talk about that in the future, once it becomes less bad. She's also a sorcerer. Anomalies, uh, generic AP. Uh, energy absorption, because she's a sorcerer, so she's played with other sorcerers. She can get a lot of AP for free. More mana. Don't do that. Uh, damage amp. Zyra's not very broken right now. Like Even if you're not going to use this now, in the future, she might be more broken, so... She's like, she is a champion that you could anomaly uh, in the right meta, so. And I have two costs. Akali's a rebel, but she's also a quick striker. Quick striker gives that attack speed. Akali is a single target uh, AP champion. She is also pretty much because she's a 1v1 assassin, uh, she can kidnap things really easily. And then because she's not in the threat of being on the enemy board, she's at pretty much no risk of dying, so... She can one shot things. She like she can win pretty much one v ones, in most cases, and then not be at risk of dying. So it's pretty good. Very broken. Invisibility. Uh, if she is on the enemy side of the board, at least she has aggro drops, and then damage amp. If, uh, she, I think in the comp that people play her in, she's the secondary carry, not the main carry. But like, you're playing her, if you're anomaly and collie, this would probably be the third best. So Camille. Camille's an enforcer and an ambusher. Uh, ambusher is a crit trait. She gets free infinity edge and she gets bonus crit, bonus crit damage. Low mana cost. She's a, a fighter. She's kind of like an assassin. Or what's notable is that she, like I said, no, low mana cost. So a lot of that was playing around that. Uh, invisibility. Aggro drop on a melee carry. Very good, but it also gives crits, which I think puts it over the edge over something like this. Uh, because it actually synergizes with their trait. Deep Roots is OP for the same reason that it is on Akali. It's the, like they're playing the same champion, except she's casting more often than she's AD, but it's like it's a, pretty much the same thing. And then uh, Knockout is because she's casting very often, she does her thing. She does her cast, which is an AoE hit, or not, it's not AoE, but it's, it's a burst damage hit. And then afterwards, she does another auto attack, which is another burst damage hit. And she does that very frequently. So, yeah, it's a lot It's a lot of free damage. And other things you can take. Camille is re-rollable right now. Uh, people finally started to figure her out. I think in the comp she's played in, she is the main carry. There is one clip of her abusing invisibility and firelight. I mean, I, I'm just happy people finally started listening to me about invisibility. But, like, yeah, uh, there is definitely a thing here. Leona is a tank. 
She's a very boring tank. This Academy, which is a very cringe trait. She was supposed to be the tank for this comp, for the Academy comp, but like, she's a 2 class, so it's like, it doesn't really work out that well. Uh, she's a Sentinel ability, gives her durability and the uh, damage. For some reason, I thought that this gave her durability and it shielded as well, but like, that would be broken. So it, it, does not, it does not do that. Durability and then AoE damage. But uh, yeah, notice uh, 3 second duration. What does that mean? Uh, Cosmic Rhythm, baby. She has 1 second of downtime on her ability, and that is broken. Dramatic Entrance. I don't know if there's a comp where she's main- like solo- she's, I don't think she's ever solo tanking. She's definitely main tankable. Main tankable. Because, I mean, there's certain setups I have for that. I don't know if it's a meta comp, but there is a setup I know of where she is. And Dramatic Entrance is broken, so why not? Because you, at the very least, you'd play with like six Sentinel. So if your six Sentinel board is dying in six seconds, it might be it might have been lost anyway. And then slime time is good, in particular because she has, it's proccing during her ability. So she has Sentinel and she has durability. So she's just healing, and she doesn't have healing otherwise. It's it's hard for her to get healing. So even though it's not like a ton, it's good enough. I have her. I have her as a deep boots champion. Just because, like, her damage is not that important. She can kidnap if she wants to, but she needs her backline to actually do damage because she does not. Nocturne is pretty cool. He's, like, not meta, but, like, I think he could be meta. But I need to play him more. Uh, he's a common quick striker. He's very... I, I don't... I don't know how much of a quick striker he is, but he's a very good automata unit. He could be used as an automata spammer. Uh, what his spell does, it makes his attacks do AoE and it makes it bleed. Because he's AoE, I like diving in. Uh, if you can get onto the backline and AoE them, it's pretty good. There's not many good AoE units in, uh, in this set, but Nocturne is one of them and he's quite good at it. Invisibility, generically broken. Last chance, uh, this is committing to the idea that... Uh, Nocturne just wants to do as much damage as possible, even if he dies. If you get like a full wrap, and he just does as much damage as possible, he might die in like the first six seconds of the fight, but like you're also one shotting like the entire front line. Other stuff that like are good, he's good with a lot of things. One I want to talk about is Center of the Universe because I think this is something that's supposed to be very good with him. The problem is that this isn't that strong, but it, I think it's supposed to be for Nocturne. It's like perfectly suited to be good for Nocturne. It deals with attack speed. It does AOE damage around him. I mean, it's fine. It's it might be the fourth best, let's be honest, or maybe the fifth best. I don't know. These aren't in order, so maybe sixth best. I don't know, man. Rel, another honestly not that bad unit. OP traits. Her traits are really strong. Uh, Conqueror, Sentinel, Visionary. She connects all these traits incredibly well. What she does is she gets a shield and then does damage. When she hits enemies, she steals Arbor MR. In theory, she could stack from casting a lot. In practice, not gonna happen. She's not that tanky. If she can live a long time, like she could be a problem, but like I wouldn't count on that. One thing I think that's super good about Rel is because the traitor is OP, she's Conger and Sentinel. So she is one of the best users of uh these. I don't know if like you should actually take these, but I, I, in a similar vein, I also don't know if you would be anomalying Rel ever. But uh, I'll talk about these interactions. Uh, she gets armor and MR from here, and she gets AD and AP from here. So what share your energy does, uh, you grant your stats to enemies around you. So because she has more of these stats than other people, she just... Like, this is the, probably the most value you can get from this anomaly. So, if this anomaly gets to the point where it's, like, good, a rel would probably be the best user. And then, miniaturize is the same thing, except you're sacrificing your rel. But yeah, so, she would be the best user, or the best unit to do these on. Uh, if you were to do them at all. If you were to anomaly rel at all. And then, also, cosmic rhythm. Maybe you can get her infinitely stacking. She like has the shield, so she's mana locked for the four seconds. So at least you can perma cast and try to get stuff. I haven't like like I said, cosmic rhythm. I haven't tested enough, but in the cases I have tested it, it's broken. So if it does give her a perma cast, she could uh, in theory be a very big problem. 
but we'll have to see once this gets on live servers and people have played this enough and if people actually like have seen this we'll very quickly know whether that's a thing or not renata another personal favorite of mine she does damage and she shields aoe shielding is pretty broken uh and there's a, a setup for that but it, it's not a meta comp but i'll talk about that in the future she's cam baron and visionary i think she's a very underrated visionary and then cam baron i think she's appropriately rated because this trade is just disgustingly broken renata very good essence of Navarre user uh she from a shields her entire front line and that was very broken and they removed it which is very sad because i was cooking but there isn't i mean i have too much stuff to cook so it's fine uh but you just want to run out of cast often so i like i'm not entirely convinced what's the best order her mana cost is like not that low so i don't know if kill streak is best option nothing is wasted probably better like it, on average this is better anyway but in the comps that you play Renata, you kind of want to keep most of, like she's keeping her frontline alive a lot, so maybe it's not. You just wanted to cast a lot. Hyper velocity, not sure if it's hyper, it might be headhunter. It depends on, I don't know, she doesn't get a lot of kills, so I, I don't like that's why I didn't put headhunter. So I will, like, whatever makes her cast faster, and then this is just more AP, which if she's casting a lot and her board is going to be AP, uh, it's good. But it's some combination of cast more plus magic training is going to be the best option. Uh, Seth, Rebel Bruiser. He is a set 9 reprint. He does damage and he stuns. He's a tank, so you give him tank. Generically the most broken ones. Any tank anomaly is good. He doesn't have a hero augment to the set, so yeah, there's none of that. It's kind of hard to justify putting that many tank items on him because he's not that tanky. He's just CC and damage. But if you were to anomaly him, just any tank options or what you're going to be looking at. Tristana is a artillerist and an emissary. It gives bonuses at, at one and four. At one, it gives the one bonus, and at four, it gives all the bonuses plus an additional bonus. Tristana gives allies six percent attack speed per star level that they are. And the artillerist is a uh, pretty much cannoneer. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why they didn't call it cannon cannoneer. It is literally cannoneer. Gain AD. You launch rockets. Ability. So her, her ult it just it does damage, but like. It's one, it ricochets when it kills, and two, it gives her permanent AD if it kills. So what you really want is to have Tristana's ult guild stuff and stack permanent AD. She's very viable as a carry and as an anomaly subject. Okay, so the first appearance of Call of the Week. Yeah, this is a very interesting one. What it does, it gives you crit strike based on the target's missing health. Every three seconds, target the lowest percent health enemy in range. So at first I thought this was like set nine that I, where it just, you get like a free auto onto this target, but this, but what this actually does, it's just like, it just changes your targeting. So it's, it's a, essentially smart targeting, at least for the purposes of Tristana, where you want to try to hit it's the lowest percent health anyway. This is a, essentially smart targeting, so this helps her stack more. And uh, the crit strike is good. I... Tristana normally runs Infinity Edge because she wants to kill with her ability. So this pretty much gives her like a ton of crit for free. And then even often overflowing to crit damage. So it makes her cast do a lot of damage. But even without that, the smart targeting is very useful. And it's it's pretty unique to Tristana. So yeah, I don't know how many other princes of this we're going to have. But it is very good. Could be a Headhunter unit. Could be a Hyper Velocity unit. It's probably I, I would I would probably put and then this is damage amp. Because she's a very versatile unit, she can work with a lot of different things. I think generically my max story is just OP, so that would be my, th my third pick. Next we have Urgot, who is also an artillerist. Uh often rerolled with Tristana. He's also an experiment pit fighter. So he's a he's a, he's the only like bruisery artillerist. He's not a tank, but he's, a, he's like a more of a frontliner. He has two range. His cast has AoE damage, and uh, it sunders, it reduces armor. The experiment bonus has some tech, but right now it's in the same boat as Zyra, where experiment is just not very good, but when it's good, I'll talk about it. However, uh, he is very good at dealing damage if you set him up for it. I think because he's a bruiser and he's two range, you just want him to get invisibility. So the, what I will say is that his experiment bonus makes him charge. So he goes into 
the enemy board more often than he should. So this helps keep him alive and more damage. Last Chance uh, helps keep him alive. Uh, he's very good at dealing damage, so this is pretty good. Hyper Velocity makes him get more attack speed when he casts. He doesn't cast super frequently, but like he does enough. Like what I will talk about another time is that attack speed is pretty good on her guts. But other options that would be good, the stuff here, comeback story, something like that. Now we have Vander, who might be my favorite unit of the set, at least playing on PBE, because uh, I completely ruined this unit for uh, the entirety of the PBE. He's a family watcher. I didn't talk about family, but uh, basically family is just uh, him, Powder, and Violet. What it does, it reduces their max mana, gives some other bonuses, his ability. It's 50 mana, which is very low. And then what it does is he braces and he gains arm and MR and then afterwards he does AD to the like single target damage to the target. Uh, this amount is increased by everyone in 2 class champion on your team. Uh, this number started at 200%. It is now 100%. Or it's now 100. It's probably going to be lower. Basically, Vandar is a one-shotting machine. Uh, he gets too much damage. He's supposed to be a tank, but... Uh, I found very early on that this guy with this setup is uh, actually a, a, just a god because uh, he gets AP and he gets AD. He's very, he gets a lot of resists, a lot of damage. Basically, this guy will just one shot your unit one at a time. It's Lux, but it's a frontliner. He's practically immortal, but if you give him an aggro drop, I don't see how he would die unless he's the last unit alive. Uh, kill streak is because, well, he's probably going to kill anyways, but he also has a low mana cost, so this. Well, this is the downtime between him not having this massive amount of arm and MR and him having it. Slow cooker works because he's practically immortal anyway, so he'll have time for this to scale, and then he'll be healing from this damage anyways. Avalanche of Armor, I talked about it. This is like the only user of it, I think, that would be like playable. I don't think this is very good, but it's like the only case where this anomaly is good. A lot of other options. You can also build him as a tank if you want to. He's like not as crazy of a tank, but yeah, you can build him as a melee carry or a tank. And all of them are like fine. It just depends on what, what you're going for that game. Now we also have the hero augments. Yeah. So this is weird in that it reduces his, it, it removes the resistances and it makes him do more damage and stuff. So I'm pretty sure this augment makes Vander worse, but uh, it's not like the augment is bad. It just makes him different. So this makes it so that he's actually more dependent on having resist like protection and resistances. So in the hero augment comp, you would actually want like six watcher and stuff. And like you need like setup for him. And it also makes it so that like there's some value to having AP. So like I guess you're it's like you don't go tight end, you just go like this. It's like, the same thing. But yeah, the point is uh the comp looks a bit different. You want to like you kinda of plays the same way, but except you actually want to put more tanky on him because he actually needs it more which is why i think this augment makes like actually makes him worse so yeah invisibility kill streak uh kind of the same thing but uh stone skin because he just he just needs help staying alive because otherwise he might not because he's, he's actually very prone to dying without the defense buffer he gets i mean honestly this might just what might be got it is this armor and mr like like they might just like honestly cut it in half the lead tank he heals and does damage He's Black Rose, which is summon trait. Uh, Sorcerer, which is mage trait. Watcher, which is a tank trait. He's like, I don't know. He's, he's, a, he's a triple trait, so he's like, whatever. But he's, he's not a very good unit. But he's got very good traits. So he's going to be seen on a lot of boards. I wouldn't anomaly him. Like, I like a lot of the units that are not, I would I say are not very good. But if you do, just give him tank. Just give him tank stuff. That's kind of what he would does. However, he also has a hero grunt. It gives him range and it, it makes him. I'm okay, the numbers are wrong, but like, because like the numbers were changed. But basically, he, he's a carry, he does damage to three enemies and he gains damage amp every time he casts. He becomes like a, one of these users. Maybe something like this. But yeah, uh, he's a range carry. So, super broken with the worry, it was removed. Other stuff to help him cast more. Pretty much is the, your best option. You can go with some other stuff like uh, t -t 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 
uh, magic training, I think. Or just anything that, like, helps any mage anomalies would be good on him. But I think anything that makes him cast, but more especially Zeri is Firelight Sniper. Sniper is Sniper. Firelight, very interesting trait. Every six seconds, Firelight dash. They attack with infinite range and they heal a percentage of damage taken. Uh, if you're not taking damage, the healing doesn't really do anything, but you also dash. Zeri's spell is also interesting because uh, it's just a passive. Every three autos, you do a bonus like you do a bonus effect you do more damage and you do damage to target uh, two targets nearby Ginsu's user uh and she'd be played with other snipers so strength training can be played you wouldn't take this if you were to play around Kog'Maw which I mean the main comp you see Zarian is with Kog'Maw uh but in that comp you also probably wouldn't anomaly Zeri you'd play an anomaly Kog'Maw so there's that if you're to dedicate to Zeri then this would probably be good because you'd probably be playing like four sniper and all the other snipers like strength training uh comeback story she's a sniper so it's like a little less value but still pretty good hyper velocity uh she sucks us really quickly because she casts every three autos so yeah 1000 cuts one i'll talk about uh doesn't show itself a lot but it's very good on a few units basically you do two damage and it ramps up the more you use it on a, the same target it doesn't reset but like it's like per unit, and then other things are just generic AD carry options. Now we have Ziggs Scrap, which I did talk about. Scrap is set to scrap. It gives a shield and it upgrades components on your items into full items, like depending on how many you have. Very good trait, very cool trait. Also, Dominator, first time we see that. Dominators get a shield, and then when they cast, they gain AP based on ma mana spent. So, so you see the, the 25% he gets. So his mana cost is. 60 so he gets 15 mana per cast so ziggs would primarily be played with dominators if you were to main carry him you can maybe play him like in scrap but you wouldn't play him as the main carry energy absorption is good because all the dominators are gonna have a lot of ap so you get that for free and ovari would be help them stack more nothing wasted it helps him cast more a magic expert multiplies the ap he's getting so okay what the experts do you get more ap from like all their sources so it makes the ap gets from his dominator traits more could also work with stuff like this or anything that helps him cast more anything that helps mages his actual spell he throws a bomb into the target and then that explodes into mini bombs to other enemies bull is a three cost uh he's automata and he's dominator uh he has 